Well, hello, folks. Good morning. Welcome to the fellowship. This might be a little noisier Sunday morning than we're used to, but it'll be all right. We've got the kids with us this morning. Merry Christmas. Um, if I haven't said that already, Merry Christmas. So glad that we get to come uh, worship God and hear His Word this morning. Uh, we've titled, and you guys know this, but we've titled the Advent series The Gift. Um, Advent means coming, and we've been discussing the coming of Christ our Lord. We looked at the gift of hope, the hope that was prophesied in the prophets of the coming Messiah, and the hope that we have in Christ. We looked at the gift of love, specifically focusing on the love of Joseph, the love that Joseph had for Mary um, when he intended to divorce her quietly. That was even an act of love. And then the love that Joseph had for God to be obedient when the angel told him to go ahead and marry Mary, to marry Mary, because the child in her womb was an act of the Holy Spirit. Um, and then we talked about the... You go sit with Mama. Yeah. And then we talked about... Uh, the love that Joseph had for Jesus to raise Jesus as his own, and um, and how that love only comes with the gift of the Messiah. We looked at the gift of peace, the peace that comes with Christ. Zechariah learned peace uh, throughout his experience of being mute during Elizabeth's pregnancy until he obeyed God to go through with God, what God told him to do and name, or what God told him to do through the angel Gabriel to name his son John, and John means graced by God. Um, and we learn peace through our relationship with Jesus as well. First Colossians, or it's not, not First Colossians, but Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22 says, And you are at one time strangers and enemies in your mind as expressed through your evil deeds, but now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you holy without blemish, without blemish and blameless before him. So we were at one time strangers and enemies, with God, um, but he reconciled us to himself um, through his death uh, of his son, and now we learn peace. And we looked at the gift of joy, the joy that comes with the Messiah. John the Baptist jumped for joy in his mother's womb whenever his Aunt Mary um, came to visit him, and he heard her voice. Um, and she, his Aunt Mary, of course, was pregnant with his cousin and Savior, Jesus um, and then Mary sang for joy. And though you know, although we face struggles and hardships and um, persecution, we're not abandoned. Our joy comes in the morning. Uh, we get knocked down, but we get up again. I bet you didn't think you were going to hear a tub thumping reference on a sermon on Christmas morning, but just trying to remind us of the joy we have in Jesus. Uh, so today we're going to look at the gift. Our text is Luke eight. Sorry, Luke chapter 2, 8 through 20. Uh, so let's pray and we'll get into it. Lord, I thank you for your son. I thank you for this day, one of the most wonderful days of the year. Uh, we thank you for this season to focus on you, this season to take an opportunity to step away from our busy lives and get into your word and get into um, just the real meaning and the real reason for this season. And so I thank you that we have taken the opportunity to come and worship you today. And Lord, I pray you just open up your word to us now and let us um, see the hope and the love and the joy and the peace we have in you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Luke 2, 8 through 20. Um, there's, you know, there's not a lot about Jesus' birth in Scripture. Um, Aaron read verse 7 earlier, but it basically says she gave birth to him, and that was it. <laughs> There's not a lot of stuff around that. Laid him in a manger, wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Um, Matthew's gospel has even less. Matthew's gospel says that, um, you know, it's the whole story of G Joseph, and then Joseph, it just says, and then Joseph named him Jesus after he was born. And that, that's the extent of it. We don't have a lot of in-depth stuff for that. So, um, we're, we're picking it up right after he's born, and this is the shepherds. Uh, Luke 2, 8 through 20 says, Now there were shepherds nearby living out in the field, keeping guard over their flock at night. So this is about four miles from where um, the shepherds were. Um, Bethlehem is about four miles from where the shepherds would have been watching over their flock. There's a couple of pictures here for us to get a view. So these are, this is the field where the shepherds are watching over their flock. And this next picture shows 
off in the background, that's modern day Bethlehem back there. So that's about four miles from this field where they're, they have to walk to. So it's four miles, uh, I think Google Maps says it takes you about um, an hour to make, that, to make that trip because of the streets and stuff you have to go. I don't know how long it took the shepherds to get there, but this is where they are. They're um, you know, living out in the fields, watching over their flock at night. And we get to verse 9, it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. So if you've been with us, you know that fear, when a supernatural being shows up, is not uncommon. Um, Zechariah was seized with fear. Mary was troubled. But it says these shepherds were absolutely terrified. Verse 10, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among people with whom he is pleased. So the shepherds were scared and as though they weren't scared enough, I mean, imagine whenever, you know, they're scared with the one angel. Imagine when the whole host of heavenly army shows up and starts singing. I mean, they must have been just in tear share there. And then verse 15 says, When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the angels said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph and found the baby lying in a manger. So in the most humble means available, the Savior of the world was born. Emmanuel, God with us. Back in verse 11 it says, He is Christ the Lord. So Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah. They, they mean the same thing. Anointed one. Uh, the one that had been prophesied for centuries has come. And how did he come? Not, you know, with this, you know, really incredible... I mean, it's a pretty incredible birth story when you think about it, but in its, in its simplest means, he wasn't born in a palace to royal parents or anything else, uh, but he's born uh, in a barn, you know, in the stables among animals. Uh, you know, the whole nativity scene, we infer a lot in that nativity scene. Everything that's, that's involved with that, with the animals and the hay and all that kind of stuff, we just assume that's kind of how it was because the Bible isn't real clear on a lot of that. Um, but I think it's it's easy inferences that we make. Um, but so he was born in a barn. He's laid down in a manger where the animals would feed. Uh, so the incarnate God, God in flesh, came in the most humble way imaginable. Um, and it shouldn't be lost on us that the bread of life was placed in a manger, uh, a feeding trough. Uh, when he teaches us to pray, he instructs us, that we should ask for our daily bread, the nourishment that we need to sustain us each day. Um, that nourishment is Christ himself. He is our daily bread. And we're sustained and nourished by feeding our souls with scripture. Um, that's why John in his gospel refers to Jesus as the word. Jesus is the word that nourishes us. And we get nourished by him daily through digging into his word. Uh, verse 17 says, When they saw him, they related with they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were astonished at what the shepherds said. So there was a bit of a crowd that had formed more than just Mary and Joseph. Um, as you can imagine, somebody's given birth out in the stables. I think people were going to go check on them. Just, you know, there wasn't room for them in the inn, but that doesn't mean when they started hearing screams coming from the barn, they weren't going to check on what's going on out here. I'm sure the animals would have been stirring around. It was a, it was a crazy scene, I'm, I'm certain. Um... And so, verse 19 says, But Mary treasured up all these words, pondering in her, in her heart what they might mean. I love this about Mary. The same phrase is used at the end of this chapter, whenever Jesus is 12 and he stays behind in Jerusalem. And after three days of searching for him, Mary and Joseph find him in the temple. And he's talking with the teachers. Um, and he's just answering questions. They're just astonished at his understanding. Um, and it says that she, she held all these things in her heart. Um, she's trying to seek to understand what's going on. Um, and verse 20 says, So the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything was just as they had been told. So when the wise men visited the king of the, the Jews, they bring gifts. Um, 
We believe there were three wise men because there were three gifts. There could have been more. I'm not sure. Um, but I think it's interesting the response that the shepherds have here. The shepherds, uh, they don't bring gifts. They come and tell what they were told. And then the shepherds, as they leave, they're given a gift. Um uh, they're given the gift of worship. Even though Christ came in the most humble way possible, he was still exalted and glorified because of who he is, uh, not because of how he came. Jesus is the ultimate gift. He's the treasure. Um, and we're giving such an amazing treasure um, as Jesus, the gift is multiplied within us, um, causing us to worship. Our response when given the gift of Jesus, like the shepherds, is to glorify and praise God. We often say about the Christian life that our obedience in this life uh, is gaining us jewels in our crown for when we get to heaven. Um, But that's not like some kind of status thing when we get to heaven, like, oh, look, they got more jewels than I do or or anything like that. But what we do with that crown when we get to heaven is we lay it at the feet of Jesus. Um, And that's the whole point. A life well lived is another aspect of worship when we return to God. uh, For you know, we return to God what we have for the overwhelming gratitude we have for him um, in receiving the gift of Jesus. So let me, uh, let me just read that again. It says, A life well lived is another aspect of the worship we return to God for the over- overwhelming gratitude we feel from receiving the gift of Jesus. But God didn't just stop at giving us the gift of his son. Um, God lavishes us with another gift of giving us the life of his son. We have his... His ministry. We have the ministry of Jesus as an example for us to follow. Uh, but it's not just the gift of His Son or the gift of His Son's presence, but He also gives us the present of His Son's death and resurrection at Easter. So, like we read at the top of the sermon, uh, you know, in Colossians, Colossians says we're enemies with God, our sin separates us from being in relationship with God. Romans says that we are still sinners. When we are still sinners, Christ died for us. So this hope, love, peace, and joy we have is all a result of the amazing, incredible, unending gift of the Savior's Son. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, our Messiah, the gift of Christmas with His life and the gift of Easter with His death and resurrection. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, should die for me? What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. Joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive her king. I think that should be our prayer, that the earth would receive her king. And I think it's it's great that we're here today celebrating this king that was born to us and offering him worship. Um because of the overwhelming gratitude we all feel. Um, and so, um, as we, we're going to sing a song of response here in a second, and as we just reflect on that, I reflect on this, um, I think like the gift we gave the kids of the Gospel of Mark, um, for them to not only have, but also to them to have something to give to someone else, a, a friend, a parent, a grandparent, whoever, um, I, I want us to have that as well. I want us, each of us to take one of those Gospels of Mark with us and give it to somebody, somebody in your life. Um, it could be a stranger you meet this week. It could be somebody that God has placed on your heart for a few weeks now. Um, and if you, if you come back here next Sunday and you don't have, you still have your Gospel of Mark you haven't given away yet, then I would ask for you to pray for God to place somebody on your heart. It might be a good idea to go ahead and Pray for God to place somebody on your heart even now so that um, you don't wind up still having your gospel of Mark next week. But uh, giving the gift of um, that act of love to someone else to give them God's word is, uh, I think, a good thing for us. So um, let's pray and we'll sing a song of invitation. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you so much for the gift of your son. To come born in the most humble of ways, um, yet he didn't—he remained humble in his attitude and everything else, Lord. But he ultimately got exalted above all things. 
And we thank you so much for that. We thank you that you've given us the gift to come and worship. And we pray that you will accept our, our worship and praise to you. I'll be holy and pleasing, glorifying to you and edifying to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.